What's and up, guys? It's Meteorology Monday time. It's Kayla and Jim and welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. What are we discussing today? Today we are going to discuss some of the footage that we've taken on, well, it wasn't necessarily a storm chase, it was more like storms came to us. Just kind of set the camera up and this is what we got and it actually turned out to be pretty interesting. Very interesting. When we went back Very and we reviewed, it was three different storms, three different days. Yep. But we noticed that there was we some things something. there that happened during each storm that after looking at all three, we kind of went, you know, this would be a good topic of discussion. For a Meteorology <laughs> Monday. <laughs> She's over there <laughs> mimicking me. But yes, it would be a, a great topic to bring up and see what everybody else's uh, thoughts are on it and their observations. But first, before we get into all of this stuff, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe down below so you never miss another Meteorology Monday. So in these time lapses that we are about to show and discuss, you can notice a little bit of swirling happening in storms that were not A, severe warned, or B, supercells. So it got us thinking like, hmm, do other storms rotate even if there aren't severe warned or supercells or out in Tornado Alley? Do we get turbulence and rotation in normal everyday storms and we just like miss it because we don't even think to look for it? Right, exactly. And I know that there are some storms that we've chased or observed uh, with the radar itself, the velocities, yep. where we have seen winds coming and going pretty close to each other, just even with some general thunderstorms too. Yeah. And thought, well, you know, is that really the radar picking that up? Is there some other things going on? But these past few storms that we've had has made us really take a step back and yeah. think about it. Normally you think of if a storm has rotation, it has to be a supercell. If it's a supercell, you've got this big mothership looking thing and rotation and a wall cloud, and then you have a tornado possibly. But maybe this happens more often than we think, and it happens every day in the Piedmont of North Carolina. How many times have you witnessed even a severe thunderstorm rotating, but it never puts down a tornado? Because uh -huh. putting down a tornado is actually, you know, a very small percentage, even of very strong storms yep. in ideal conditions. It takes a lot to even put down a tornado. But back that up a little bit. Okay, let's make the storm, you know, not as intense. Are right. the dynamics still there to cause little swirling motions right. or some rotation that it might not be the entire base of the thunderstorm, but portions of the base exactly. of the thunderstorm. And you would think that is a possibility because you've got winds at different directions, thunderstorms grow. Not necessarily the kind of thunderstorms that are your typical air mass thunderstorms that they've got no wind speed or directional shear. They just kind of blow up and fall apart within 20 minutes. Popcorn basically, storms. That's right, basically on top of themselves. We're talking about some that do have some directional and speed shear to sustain the storm yep. for a longer period of time and actually get it to move away from its point of origin, but not strong enough to develop it into a supercell. Correct. So it is possible that with all those dynamics in place that there could be some sort of rotation within the cloud or at the cloud base or, or the rotation that was in the cloud made its way down to the base that yep. we could actually see it instead of it being hidden. So is it possible to be more frequent? <laughs> Let's take a look at three or four examples. So this first one was taken about a month ago and we're going to look at the tree line and we'll see bunch of rotation there. It kind of almost looks like a wall cloud, kind of, sort of, you know, it's North, it's North Carolina, so <laughs> it's not going to be like a beautiful wall cloud. Not in this one. Yet. <laughs> not yet. We'll get there. Just hold but on. But let's observe some swirling stuff. All these time lapses were associated with storms in a line of storms. They were not like pop-up cells. It was all part of a line. We do have a radar image that can kind of give you an example of one of these storms of what it looks like 
typical North Carolina storm. We got a line pushing in from the west. All these were taken in that scenario. None of them were severe warned. None of them were supercells. Some of them had a tiny bit of red and green on the velocity showing rotation, but it wasn't not enough for the National Weather Service to be like, look at this is a severe storm. So time lapse number one. So if we're looking in the middle of the time lapse here, you can kind of see the clouds going in different directions. And as it goes through time, we're going to look at the tree line here. We start to see some swirling action, maybe a little bit of a little notch there. Yep, at the center bottom of the screen, yep. just above the tree line. And now, I mean, you can kind of even see, kind of got something here on the right side of that little, what would you call that, a base? Yeah. So it's not a lowering, it's not a wall cloud, it's, it's nothing technical because again, these aren't severe warns, they're not supercells, but it's something. It's interesting. It but is. When you look at the rest of the things. clouds and how they're moving and all of a sudden just this just kind of tightens up a yeah. little bit and kind of has a little bit of a cloud tag underneath it right where the rotation is occurring. We looked back afterwards at, at, at this we were one. Like, hmm. What was that little thing? <laughs> and as quickly as it formed, it dissipated. But yeah, as the you can point see, being, it only lasted a little bit. Right, and it wasn't severe warned, and it wasn't. But we did observe it. We did observe it. It's quite interesting. And you know the first rule of meteorology. How do we study meteorology? We observe it. The next time lapse we're going to take a look was a different day. And again, if we're looking in like the center of the screen where you see the most contrast in the clouds, that's roughly the location. Uh, once we put the time lapse in motion, you'll start seeing the swirliness going on. Swirliness. It's an official meteorology. <laughs> so let's take a look at it. Shelfy thing going and there it is, right, right in the middle the of the center. screen moving from left to right you got this big like ocean wave thing tumbling across <laughs> and it just keeps right on going it just keeps right on going right behind it too there's another swirly there that's going and that same part it starts to form another one mm -hmm. and then it looks like the storm kind of starts dying at this point and kind of moves out and the winds overtake it on this side yeah and we got second cell different... comes in behind it it's different directions, different speeds, and... So many weird things now on the left side of the screen. What was that? <laughs> what was that? It's quite interesting. Very interesting. And this is another, like, great example of how the atmosphere is actually a fluid. Mm -hmm. It's much, It's a lot like the ocean. You get these waves and circulations and little eddies, and you have clouds going up and air currents coming down and all this mixing and stuff and it's cool because uh, the ocean of course you can see that happening and the clouds in this type of scenario makes it so you can see it in the atmosphere yeah absolutely and what's really cool is that you know pictures are great but when you have video where you can just watch it you tend to pick up things that you're not going to normally see and just exactly. still image yeah. but what's even cooler is when you can use time lapse and let that go faster than real time and you know you actually see all this flow going on that you know it looks too slow from the naked eye when you're looking at it in real time but when you speed it up you see all these things going on yes and and we discover a lot of things exactly. after we record yeah it's so cool because we'll set up the camera and we'll be like all right all right and then 30 minutes later we'll turn off the camera we'll play it back and and kind of go fast on the the little slider oh my gosh did you see that what is that <laughs> what is that because in real life of course everything is moving pretty slow these videos are uh, this one specifically i believe was about 30 minutes worth of footage all sped up so taking 30 minutes to watch all of that 47 seconds uh, it, it's hard to pick up on these things in with the naked eye in real time, but that's why we have cameras. It's pretty cool. That's right. So this is the same day, a little bit later, and again, we'll pop up the radar image, giving the example of what these kind of storms look like. The radar image is actually from this day, and here we go. Again, looking in the center of the screen, you can see it go by. Let's play it again real quick. little eddies right in the middle of the screen again and the interesting thing about this one is it's going the opposite direction mm -hmm. as the other ones yeah so we had storms coming in from one direction and it's almost like we had a, the front passed so in, in time it, it actually wound up everything going you know everything behind the front wound up going in a different direction yeah. so we had storms coming this way in the beginning and storms going away or, or off from 
right to left this side right. this time, and it was, it was really cool. I've always been fascinated. I've been staring at the clouds since uh, as long as I can remember. <laughs> and, you know, just sitting there and watching them, you're like, wow, look at them just come together and do all this. And it was really, really cool. A true weather nerd. <laughs> Starting the earliest memory I had, I was four years old, staring up at the sky looking at the clouds. He's been a weather nerd for 10 decades. <laughs> 10 decades. Yes. Accurate math right there. The last time lapse we're going to show you was taken again on a different day. Different day. Um, again, a little different storm structure compared to the first ones, but still so overall non-severe or non -severe. what we would call sub-severe, below one severe levels. really surprised me that it wasn't severe, as you'll see. Yeah, so let's take a look at it, and you'll want to look in the center of the in screen. The I think you'll be able to tell where to look once we <laughs> pop it up. It's like, oh my goodness, North Carolina or Oklahoma, who is she? We can't tell. <laughs> Here we go. Look at that kind of mushroom cloud looking thing. You've got your base clouds, you've got this thing, all of the swirling, and it keeps moving. Look at the motion. That's beautiful. It's incredible. I think I've watched this time lapse way too many times to admit. See, the wind's just different directions and things are just and then you got this little thing on the left side of the screen, kind of started doing something else, and then, of course, it disappears as that rain curtain on the right comes through, but yeah. look at that. In the very first frame of the video, <laughs> it looks like a beautiful supercell. I was fully we were, expecting to hear tornado sirens at some point. Because we were surprised because we pulled up the radar, we're looking at it, and we're like... We're like why is this not severe warned? And we would look at the you know velocities and we go, well, there's nothing too exciting. There's nothing yeah, there. Yeah, maybe there might be you know nothing a organized. Bit, there was but, stuff there, but know, it wasn't organized. But nothing that was a tight cluster. Right. You know, red here, green here, different directions at high speed. <laughs> Greensburg, Kansas. And yeah, <laughs> that's right. No, nope, this isn't more Oklahoma. No. <laughs> and that is a prime example of why you need to go observe. Because yep. if you just rely on technology and you're just looking at your laptop trying to determine, okay, what's worthy of taking pictures or video of. You're gonna you, miss a lot. You gotta get in the field and, yep. and you'll miss a lot if you don't. The tech is cool, but you also have to media. That's right, the media and the tech. <laughs> and the weather. And the weather. Well, the weather's obvious. <laughs> media, tech, weather. Exactly. So there you have it, three different days, three different storm systems, three different storms, and you know, we saw common thread there of rotation. No, it didn't put down a tornado, it wasn't anything to that degree, but we did observe the rotation. Yep. How common is that? Is it more common than we think? And you know, there's other things that we are not considering, like topographical effects, you know, which is, you know, terrain induced. We're just kind of observing, hey, we were in one spot looking in pretty much the same direction. Yep. We had winds at different heights, different speeds, but different yep. setups. And we still observed rotation in sub-severe storms. Exactly. So this is probably a lot more common. And there's some other uh, terminology that we've said about the velocities and stuff. We'll put links below from some of our blogs that yes. we've got on our website yes. about looking at radar and looking at wind velocity. Yep, so if none of that made sense, check out our blogs and then they'll make sense. That's right. And as always, again, if you like what you saw, give this video a thumbs up, helps us out a ton. Also make sure that you're subscribed. Follow us on the rest of our social media, Facebook and Instagram popping up here if you'd like to see more of our weather adventures. And go ahead and comment below as well any storms that you've observed the same behaviors. Exactly. Um, and if you notice something in the videos that we didn't talk about, obviously yeah. there's a lot to pay attention to in those videos. Let us know if you saw something else. That's right. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And may your swirls be visible. I'm gonna remember to pop up the social media <laughs> stuff this time. Yeah, editing Kayla, don't forget. It's the worst.